Welcome back. Um, now our next guest here in Agat Online in the studio is Ken Wilson. Welcome, Ken. Hello. Welcome. Lovely to have you here. Uh, we've just come from Ken's uh, plenary session uh, entitled 10 Quotes That Will Make You Think. Uh, Ken is an author and teacher trainer. So Ken, could you please summarize just briefly for the viewers what your plenary was about? Well, I think quotations are often very interesting that, you know, that um, you see, for example, I have a diary and at the bottom of every second page there's a quotation <laughs> and I have a magazine, my favorite magazine has quotations of the week and often they're from quite old sources from Aristotle mm. or from dead presidents of the United States, that <laughs> kind of thing. And they're often very interesting. And I've, I've often used two or three quotations uh, in a talk and I thought it suddenly occurred to me that some of them really resonate with people so I'll try and put ten together. And um, so I put three from old philosophers and people like that, and three from more recent people like Bill Gates and mm. Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg, three women, and then a wonderful double quotation from Barack Obama and Ms. Michelle Obama, which are all quite amusing in their own right. And at the same time, I want to then make people see the significance to their working life. Almost none of the quotes are actually about education, mm -hmm. but I think they all have a resonance for what happens in the classroom. What I could hear uh, from outside and inside your session was lots of laughter and people enjoying themselves a lot. Um, was there a favorite quotation, do you think, among the audience that they really <laughs> kind of responded to? Yes, I think the very last one, which was um, um, a story about um, Barack and Michelle Obama, who went to a, out for a meal in Chicago. And um, the owner of the restaurant came up and said, Mr. President, Mrs. Obama, are you having a nice evening? And they said, yes, thank you very much. And then he said, Michelle, you don't remember me, but um, I took you to the high school prom when we were 17. Wow. And you know, like everybody in the class, I was completely in love with you. Mr. President, you made a wonderful choice. <laughs> I hope you have a nice evening. <laughs> and then so apparently Obama said to Michelle Obama, just imagine if you'd married him, you'd be the owner of this wonderful restaurant now. And mm. Michelle said, no, if I'd married him, he'd be president of the United States. <laughs> and wow. that, that kind of, you know, it's about aspiration. That's mm -hmm. when, in the classroom, if you're asking your students to talk about their ambitions, don't just say, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a lawyer. Ask them to really think about it. Don't just do the surface things about their ambitions. Let them go deeply into what they'd really like to be and to share it with the rest of the class. Mm -hmm. It happens to be the English class, but it's a nice place for that to happen. <laughs> Um, could you tell our viewers and, and me as well what projects are involved in what you're doing at the moment mm. in your professional well, life? Um, I used to be a teacher and a teacher trainer and then about 20 years ago I kind of got onto the writing thing. Uh, I was asked to write my first course material which is the reason why I first came to Hungary. Um, actually the second reason. I came to Hungary <laughs> actually the first time in here to Eger in 1991 for the British Council and then subsequently with a book I wrote. And since then I've always had at least one course project going along. Um, I also had a theatre company which I had to close down 10 years ago, it was too much work. And at the moment I'm working on about three or four different projects. I mean I mm. always have a lot of writing projects. Considering that you know, the, the world of ELT publishing is, is really or, oriented towards online now, there's an enormous amount of print material still being commissioned and still being written. So I'm involved in about four different print projects which have an online component. But so oh. that keeps me busy. So you must be busy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seen your blog because you've got an excellent uh, WordPress blog. Thank you. Can mm. you say the title of, or the address? It's just called Ken Wilson's blog. It's Ken Wilson ELT dot wordpress dot com mm -hmm. uh -huh. and what can people find on your blog if they visit well it's interesting blog? because uh, I started the blog about three years ago and I, I was very into Twitter at the time um, and so I thought I'd, I'd seen I thought I think blogging is really interesting it's a very unusual way to do teacher development to professional development because normally professional development is quite Focus. You go to a, a course, you go to a talk, you read mm. something in a magazine, in a, a you know, ELTJ or something. But in fact, if you're just following on Twitter or Facebook and, the, and somebody links to a blog, so out of nowhere you suddenly find yourself reading about something really okay. interesting. And I think it's a really interesting way to accidental professional development, if you mm. like. And I thought, would I have anything to offer that? So I tweeted, I'm thinking of starting a blog. And I've been in this business for a very long time, you see. So people said, yes. So I started just talking about the old days and how we taught and unusual things that happened. And then after that, I started asking people who I met at conferences. In fact, there's about four people at this conference who I asked to write a guest blog 
I met them at a conference, thought their ideas were great, went to one of their workshops and they wrote a guest blog for me. And um, it's nice because I get a lot of visitors and some of these people really deserve to be mm -hmm. read and they weren't getting many visitors to their own blog. So I felt quite good about being a, you know, the, the, giving them the chance to be seen online. And I need to get back to blogging. I haven't blogged much recently. <laughs> But you've got a very popular uh, blog post. For example, the one I've seen recently is the 10 things I love about Hungary. <laughs> right. Uh, could you tell us about that a bit? Well, um, I've written two or three 10 things I love about. Um, one was about Belgium, one was about Brazil, and the third one was about Hungary. Because they're, they're Belgium, Belgium because people always say terrible things about Belgium, and it's a wonderful country with fantastic things. Brazil, because everybody says football and samba, and there's yeah. so much more to Brazil. And Hungary, just because I thought, there are so many things I like about this country. I've been here, I, I, I'm embarrassed to admit, about 30 times, and, that, and my <laughs> Hungarian doesn't exist, and I really <laughs> apologize for that. But um, I first came 21 years ago, here to Ege for the British Council. Two years later, I did my first Drama Plus course. And the, one of my strongest memories was at the end, it was down near Ketchkomet in the Bugatsi mm -hmm. Pusta, you know, down there yeah, where the horses Pusta. are yeah, and things. Yeah. And we went to a charda, a very, very nice country restaurant. And I was sitting there thinking, wow, it worked. We did this course, we organized it ourselves with the help of a woman in Ketchkomet, mm -hmm. uh, Eva Berenyi, and um, it, it, it'd been okay. And there was only one Hungarian man. There were about 14, 15 people on the course from about five different countries what, about six men, one of them was Hungarian. He was sitting next to me and we both ordered a beer. And when the beer arrived, I picked up my glass of beer and I went clink with him, you see. <laughs> this was 1993. In those days, you couldn't yeah. clink beer. And what happened was he wasn't used to it. The beer went all over his trousers. So that was the first thing. But the second and more important thing, everything went silent in the restaurant. And I thought, wow. I've done something really stupid here. And so I said, what have I done wrong? And he said, well, we don't do that in Hungary. We don't click the beer glasses. So I asked him to apologize to the people in the restaurant and things went back to normal. <laughs> but fast forward to 2001 and, and I still had my theater company and they came to Hungary and they said, what do we need to know about Hungary? I said, well, when you get a glass of beer, don't <laughs> clink the beer, right? And I came with the company and we were sitting in a restaurant and one of the actors went, well, cheers. Oh, sorry to this man from the British Council, Gabor. Mm. Uh, you can't do that, can you? And Gabor said, no, now you can. And I thought, what? Now we can <laughs> clink changed? our glasses, yeah. beers? So if, for anybody who doesn't know, who's watching from outside Hungary, on the 1st of January 2000, is that right? Yeah. That this 150-year uh, thing about not clinking the beer glasses because it reminded them of the repression years in the 1840s, it stopped. So from the 1st of January 2000, people were able to clink their glasses again. And I just think <laughs> that's the most extraordinary thing. For you Hungarians, that's quite normal. For everybody else, that's quite remarkable. You have a yeah. 150-year history, and that day it stops, you know. <laughs> and I thought about the bottle dancing, and I love Seged. I think Seged's the most extraordinary place with its 365 statues. And uh, so I just suddenly counted up. There were so many things I like about um, this country. So I wrote them all down. And the fact that I first met a Hungarian when I was 14 in England. Oh, at yeah, a woman. At a, yeah, yes, I at a, that. Yeah, at a, red hair or brownish. A, a youth hostel. Yeah. She was cooking Hungarian food. And, and I come from Manchester, and in, when I was 14 years old, Manchester, all the food was kind of grey looking, and <laughs> all the food was red and green and interesting colours, yeah. So I think I was always meant to come to Hungary a lot, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. we're, we're glad that you're here mm. again. Uh, and what about your ITF of Hungary experiences? How about this conference in, in particular, yeah. for example? Well, I think it's interesting today. Um, the, the thing about Hungarian teachers, and I think this is... I think other people would agree is that you, you you really think very hard about things you know I mean I'll take Gabor this man from the British Council as a good example I mean he looked quite serious all the way through the mm. English teaching theatre tour so I said to him Gabor how how was the tour are you okay about it and he said this has been the most interesting two weeks <laughs> of my life you see and that's a very Hungarian reaction yeah, monotonous. really well yeah. no but the point is and this is I think people have to realize when they're giving talks is that Hungarians are f really focused on what's mm -hmm. being said. They're processing the information. They may not say very much at the time. It's a little bit like being in Japan. Japanese teachers, there's a lot of silence in a Japanese workshop because they st they're, not, they're, they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm not ready to give my response to this at the moment. But today was different. I don't know why there was a they were ready for mm -hmm. to have fun today. You know, they were much more, they were less worried about, I want to think about this first before I do it, you know. So I think there's a, 
I think Hungarian teachers are still thinking a lot, but there's a, a softening of this rather serious, I'm going to think about this yeah, and then and tell you later. From outside, yeah. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that at mm -hmm. all, but it just seemed to change today. Mm. Okay. Any more plans that you've got? I don't know, visiting another country you haven't visited yet? Well, what day is it? It's Saturday, isn't it? Yes. On Wednesday, Saturday. I'm going to Japan. Wow. Uh, so I shall, be able, I shall find the Japanese sitting there and listening very <laughs> intently. I'm going to Japan and Korea because I, my, one of the books I've written is an American English course and it's mainly mm. used in Japan and Korea. Um, after that, I'm coming to Belgrade in November. And I mean, yeah, we, we're very lucky. People, authors, are, we get a lot of invitations and... It's, I mean, I don't work in an institution. I, I work at home. I have a shed at the end of my garden where I do my writing. I, I live a very solitary working life. You know, my wife works in ELT as well, but the two of us are, are freelance and we both work at home. So actually people think I'm all over the place. I'm at home in my shed most of the time. So <laughs> to come here and listen to more talks and to you know, engage with teachers is really a very pleasant experience. And, one which I only do like once every month or once every two months, so... Mm. And you know, the, the topic of the conference, this year's conference, uh, is inspiration. Mm. And I've checked your LinkedIn profile and I've seen loads of people telling us about you as being a source of inspiration for them. Really? Oh. Yeah, for example, there was a Romanian gentleman or lady, I can't remember, who said that uh, in the 1990s you helped Romanian teachers a lot and Chinese teachers a lot. Um, mm. So how do you know that you're a, a huge source of or immense source of inspiration well, for people? Well, that's very nice. I, th I think the thing for me is that I, it works both ways, you know, I mean, uh, and Romanians are quite different from Hungarians. Uh, I know there's a crossover, the Transylvania thing, there's a Hungarian um, population in, in Romania. Romanian teachers are very, very interesting people and they're very, very uh, immediate and noisy and passionate about their work. I was really surprised because, you know, I mean, uh, obviously, I, when I went to, first went to Romania, it was after Ceausescu had disappeared. Mm. So if, theoretically, the, the situation was different. But even under Ceausescu, English teaching was very good. Education was valued, you know. And you could see that even though they lived in a re very repressive regime, that teachers were um, working hard. And, and the, the English level, uh, Romania is the one place I've been to where you can say, you, you say, is it possible to be a natural speaker of English if you've never been to an mm -hmm. English speaking country? Romania is the example that I would quote. All the I said, have you spent any time in the English speaking world? No, I've never been outside <laughs> Romania. I was astounded by their level of, of uh, so that inspires me to go in front of a group of people who've never been outside their own country, whose interest in English is phenomenal, whose ability with English is phenomenal, and whose um, attitude to the things I'm talking about is so positive. It's a very, very nice experience. And it really is the same here, as I said. Yeah. I think Hungarians, as, but today, this Hungarian audience was like a Romanian audience. <laughs> it was just so noisy, so immediate. They were offering, this is the other thing, you see. And this is not just Hungary. If you ask a question, people think, I think I know the answer, but I'm not sure, mm. so I won't say anything. That's a very natural reaction from students and teachers all over the world. But today people were shouting things out even if they weren't sure it was right. I thought it was a really, really healthy attitude, you know. <laughs> and my situation, every teacher's situation, if you say no, that's the yeah. end of that person's involvement. Exactly. So you say, fantastic answer. It's actually not the right answer, but I'm so pleased you said that. You know, you have, <laughs> you have to find a, a kind of strategy to make people feel positive about having answered your question, even if the answer wasn't the one you were expecting. Mm. Okay, so this is one reason why other presenters should come to Eyes of Hungary conferences to meet audiences like this one. I like hope you so, guys. yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Mm. Uh, to oh, I would absolutely recommend people to come to this conference, it's wonderful. It's a very nice atmosphere, Eyes of Hungary. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just one final comment is that our next interview is going to be Bonnie Tsai. Uh, after lunch, but I'm not keeping you anymore because I know that you haven't <laughs> had lunch yet. So That's all right. That's okay. go mm -hmm. and have lunch, enjoy, uh, meet some new people, and I'll see you later on Thank in another session. Thank, Thank you, you again for, for coming. <laughs> Very welcome.